Brandon regime instituting utilizing the Department of Justice to go after trust busters like Apple. We allege that Apple has consolidated its monopoly power not by making its own products better, but by making other products worse. You just want to be EU Parliament so bad, objectively, American existence would be like noticeably better. 10% better almost immediately if we started implementing some quality of life adjustments that like European Union regulators do on a regular basis like universalizing the power cords you know what I mean like half the time when we inevitably get stuff that are good quality of life adjustments it is a consequence of EU regulation making its way here as well because it inevitably is cheaper to just mass produce the same product this is the nerd that happens in the background where the government is actually working unfortunately Unfortunately, the government rarely works in this direction in the United States of America, but I do think that it's a good thing. Here's another Brandon example I will use, right? What did they do recently with the credit cards? Like hidden fees. Here's another thing. Credit card late fees are going to be capped at $8. Junk fees. Going after junk fees. These are small things that the government should absolutely do that will yield a tremendous amount of popular support, okay? Especially if they do a good enough job of promoting what they're doing okay get rid of those fees on concert tickets in my honest opinion yes going after price gougers a lot of this stuff is good i think adam conover friend of the show adam conover's the g word netflix series which was co-produced by obama sorry to tell you or, or i think obama was featured in it is pretty good at showcasing all the stuff that happens in the background that you basically take for granted that keep society together and stop it from collapsing completely that are very necessary necessary that we just kind of take for granted. It is the other side of government that rarely gets coverage, but is important. Okay. This isn't a good thing. You can't be a monopoly of your own universe. Apple own and more importantly, created the stack top to bottom. Apple have no more a monopoly on iPhones than Sony has a monopoly on PlayStations, or you have a monopoly of being Hasanabi. Wait, what? Sorry, we made it. So it doesn't matter is an insane way to argue on this issue especially because it doesn't matter just because a company got like really successful on its own doesn't mean that they can't be violating antitrust rules they absolutely can and apple absolutely is okay and breaking some of the monopoly power that these massive corporations have will literally yield consumer benefits it's about the software it's like microsoft lawsuits over internet explorer remember how good that was i mean microsoft still does his very best to try and shove Internet Explorer down your goddamn throat. But think about that. If an iPhone user messages a non-iPhone user in Apple Messages, the text appears not only as a green bubble, but incorporates limited functionality. The conversation is not encrypted. Videos are pixelated and grainy, and users cannot edit messages or see typing indicators. As a result, iPhone users perceive rival smartphones as being lower quality because the experience of messaging friends and family. They're so right about this. They're so right about this like this is an immediate improvement for all consumers by the way and the only reason why you would want this to maintain is so that you can call android users like broke boys and feel special and i say this as someone who's never had an android i say this as someone who is a firmly committed apple user i have an iphone i have an apple macbook laptop i have an apple watch i think it's ridiculous that there is no cross-pollination and you can't use other their products and it, you're like trapped in the Apple family. Very silly. This is a pro-consumer move and the only reason why you would want this is because you perceive it as like a status symbol. I don't have an issue using Apple products, but I do think that it would be better overall for every single consumer if there was more cross-pollination, if like all of the apps could be utilized across the board and had all of the same options. In 2022, Apple's CEO was asked whether Apple would fix iPhone to Android messaging. The questionnaire added, quote, not to make it personal, but I can't send my mom certain videos, close quote. It does seem kind of stupid when you talk about this because you got like Merrick Garland talking about something so silly that people have made memes about, but it's exactly this like little 
impacts daily user experience, daily consumer experience that will yield tremendous benefit for all consumers across the board. Millions, tens of millions of people, if not hundreds of millions of people that will have a better consumer experience overall. I think you don't know anything about the tech behind messaging, so you should probably learn about it before talking on it with such certainty. I don't think I need to understand the tech behind messaging to say that like the amenities that Apple offers should also go across all of the platforms you need to know about encryption and standards okay well while i don't understand about e encryption and standards i still think that it should still be allowed by everyone you are doing the apple line here which is making it readily available for every other product is going to like limit Apple's security or whatever, which I do agree. I think Apple does care about security for sure and privacy, even though they do also obviously internally allow other apps to steal and suck all of your data. They just need to add RCS to iPhone, then it'll all be good. Apple announced that RCS support is coming to iPhone next year. Apple has announced today that it will adopt the RCS rich communication services messaging standard. The feature will launch via a software update later next year and bring a wide range of iMessage style features to messaging between iPhone and Android users. So so I guess that you're advocating for something that Apple has already seen partially because they knew this was coming and has already decided to move in the direction of, and this is from 2023, November 16, 2023, the move for RCS is due to China. I don't know if it's for China. It's probably EU, right? EU forced Apple to use RCS. Google tries publicly shaming Apple into adopting RCS. Apple folds for a third time to the EU, and it means iPhone users can now get red receipts when texting their Android friends. Apple wallet is Apple's proprietary digital wallet on the iPhone. Apple actively encourages banks, merchants, and other parties to participate in Apple Wallet, but it simultaneously exerts its monopoly power to block these same partners from developing alternative payment products and services for iPhone users. Here's the thing, okay? I will explain why this is good for Apple consumers as an Apple consumer myself, and I hope that you will understand. In an environment where Apple doesn't try to create a walled garden of only Apple family products and it seems like if this goes through apple will be forced to make changes apple will have to compete with everyone else both on the hardware and software side by simply making better hardware and better software if apple's overarching popularity relies on its inability or relies on its restrictions as it pertains to applications or as it pertains to hardware that is not in the apple family that actually stifles innovation this is why I'm saying more competition is actually beneficial for the consumer themselves. This will directly lead to better consumer experiences for those who have Apple products. The other side of this is that Apple engages in price leadership or at least like restriction leadership in this regard, which will get other companies, you know, Google, I guess, is the only other major player in this space to also try to create a restrictive ecosystem. Whereas as being able to purchase a Samsung or Google hardware and use it with ease with Apple hardware and software is beneficial for you. It's actually a good thing. You just cannot imagine the seamless communication that your Apple products have with your Apple iPhone being the same for non-Apple products as well. That's part of the reason why you are claiming that this will be a bad thing. Why have any proprietary hardware or software at that point then? It's a dumb argument. I mean, don't get me started on this. It's not though. It's on Apple's protecting its user experience. They have compete on hardware and software. Bad take, to be honest. Apple has been innovating a lot lately with their hardware and software. This is just forcing them to use other stuff. I think they should be forced to use other people's stuff because if they are forced to have universal standards for non-Apple products, they will then be forced to make that experience as seamless for other hardware and software that's non-Apple, then don't buy Apple products? No, because when you buy a non-Apple product, it doesn't connect to your iPhone as easily as an Apple product. The other side of this is also that if you have only Apple products and you want to use it on a Steam Deck, the connectivity is much harder. Apple should be making products that are easy to integrate into other... That's why I don't buy other stuff. Yeah, that's the whole point, dumbass. That's why you don't buy other stuff. You're literally talking about this restriction that Apple has imposed upon you. You are advocating for being cucked further as the government is doing something, finally, for once, that takes steps against that. This is just cultish thinking, I think. It doesn't make any sense. It genuinely does not make any sense. You have been conditioned into hating Google and Windows, which aren't great companies either, for the record. They have their own 
issues, but you've been conditioned into hating these other ecosystems because Apple is incredibly restrictive and so are these guys as well in some respects into using competitors hardware and software. That's the problem. This makes it so that you have choice. You can have an Apple iPhone if you think that the Apple iPhone is better on specs and on pricing and then turn around and use your Apple iPhone with a product that Google made like Google headphones or something or a, a non-Apple headphone that you can easily incorporate and it's as seamless as like basically connecting to your own apple headphones why don't we apply the standard to automakers too they repair their parts don't work together if you are comparing how restrictive apple is when it comes to repair in comparison to like auto manufacturers i don't know what to tell you but we already do have standardized stuff in auto manufacturing like auto repair take usbc as an example they probably would have started adoption earlier if it wasn't for their overall proprietary advantage exactly usbc being universalized is good is beneficial Official for everyone you don't need to get like the apple lightning rods or whatever the it's a good thing now you can share a singular charger that's why tesla isn't great because we can only use tesla auto repair shops instead of any auto repair shop exactly tesla is good for its war against car dealerships but it's bad when it comes to repair for this exact same reason i legitimately don't understand it it's like advocating against universal chargers for electric vehicles you know what i mean like being a tesla fanboy and being like well elon invented the supercharger that's like much better than all of the other ev chargers so he should be able to maintain the, the, his supercharger supremacy which is ridiculous so what are you talking about every single argument that you've made so far basically just says i like being in the in club in the apple club how will i feel superior to other consumers with my expensive gear let's apply the standard to gaming consoles i want my xbox controller to work with my ps5 dude don't even get me started on that oh my god dude i've compared universalizing the console controller to slavery before okay i have a very famous rant on this while playing zelda are you kidding me yes we should do that controller compatibility and universalizing all the buttons should happen everyone in any kind of like legislative body that has regulatory power is 857 years old they don't know anything about consoles so we can't even have this conversation there's something you need to understand here hardware and software relationships will always weaponize compatibility for anti-competitive purposes wait what i do understand that and i don't think that that should exist the whole point that i'm making and that's what i'm trying to explain to apple fanboys as an apple fanboy my Self, dude, what, what 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 more do i need to show you you know what i mean i use the apple what is it the plus the big bulky headphones i have the in-ear apple headphones i have pretty much every Apple product with the exception of the Vision Pro or whatever. Yeah, I have the AirPod Plus. I have the AirPods. I have everything that's Apple. I use almost completely. I use Apple. I have an Apple TV. Are you an Apple fanboy because you're forced to be? Would you have bought a Samsung watch if you could have? If it had the same ease of compatibility, I probably would have. If there was an easy app integration and it didn't require so much more, I probably would have. A big part of why I use Apple products across the board is because it's the easiest it just works so seamlessly so perfectly but i love apple products and that is in part because apple systematically boxes out third parties products and services from gaming to digital wallets limiting choice and blocking potentially better products from emerging apple even sacrifices short-term gains to maintain this power apple's better at privacy from degrading the security of text messages to selling your data to foreign governments apple's cloak of privacy is a mainly self-serving branding strategy apple can improve privacy at any time without engaging in anti-competitive products like this entire lawsuit fixes a lot of the things that you you are holding on to as a benefit thinking that it will be worse overall in the long run for you when the only thing that this takes away is an air of superiority that you might feel by having an apple product that's literally it that's why i'm saying i don't think you personally recognize that that's kind of what you're advocating for it doesn't make sense it's just eliminating the social capital that you have by having an apple product opening up as a consumer for you to utilize so many different products like a wide range of products that is seamlessly integrated if this is forced then apple has to maintain its same seamless transition with third-party developers on the software side and also products that are not inside of the apple family there are currently obviously products that they allow that are in the apple family you see them when you go to the apple store but this would force apple to basically create that same transition that same seamless transition with every 
product because that's what competition is. Realistically, Apple isn't even competing on hardware and software. They're competing on ecosystem, but ecosystems are inherently anti-competitive. Exactly. They must be forced to compete for each product category separately. And if their products are all the best in class, they can work well together. What Apple has is a walled garden. Precisely the case, yes. But it does when a firm acquires or maintains monopoly power not because it has a superior product or superior business acumen, but by engaging in exclusionary conduct. You should use an Android. I mean, maybe, maybe in the future. The Biden admin is also coming after food delivery services. Have you ever used a food delivery app to order a meal, but notice a much higher end price? It's called drip pricing and it adds up. My administration is working to end this practice over junk fees. Yeah, that's great. I think this is also lame as hell. Like, I want to give all the money to the driver i don't want to give money to the delivery app like it's crazy this sh sucks hidden fees junk fees they're ass cheeks and they add up over the course of a year i'm willing to bet that the average consumer over the course of a year is probably i'm sure there's data for this i don't know what, what it is but i'm willing to bet that like it's it adds up to thousands of dollars a year dollar here two dollars there four dollars here it adds up this all is to get votes they wouldn't care if the polls were not in their favor wait what do you mean that's all politics i'm not gonna literally yell at the biden administration for not doing things that are good in order to win votes and then yell at them when they are doing things to win votes that is the entire point what is happening here yeah they should be buying our votes that is what politics is about you're now getting mad at them for doing good things that are beneficial to consumers actually regulating because you're like well, they just want to win our votes. It's like, yeah, dude, it's called being a f functioning government. What's next, dude? Are you going to be like, wow, dude, the guy working at McDonald's doesn't really have love for making burgles and is simply doing this so he can survive and live and get a paycheck. Yeah, I know. That's kind of the point. It is pretty funny that we are so far removed from the government actually taking action that is beneficial to consumers that when they do actually do that, we're like, what the this seems indecent. No, man, it's not. It is decent. It is expected. It is what should happen.